Matthew? No, I won't. Ha ha ha. Catch me if you can. We will catch you, Matthew. <sighs> Give us the ball back, Matthew. <sighs> no, I'm not giving the ball. Jimmy, stop him! Jimmy, you, you. Thank you, Jimmy. You've got the ball now. But you didn't catch me. Oh, we could have caught you. But we thought we'd let you run ahead. Hello, kids. Huh? Father John? What were you doing here? What happened to you, Matthew? Nothing, Father. We were just playing. Hmm. Were you just playing? Or were you fighting with each other? No, father. We were just playing. We don't fight anymore, father. Yes, father. We've not had a fight for a long, long time now. Hmm, that's good. Come on, let's go and sit over there. Father, you said you will be telling us the story of Prophet Isaiah today. Do you remember that? Hmm. But before I begin, let me check if you remember the verse I taught you yesterday. The quote from Prophet Micah? Yes. Can you tell me that famous quote of Micah? It was, act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly with your God. Wow, that's correct. So you do remember? Yes, Father. We remember everything that you teach us. Very good. All right, now I'll start with the story of Isaiah, the prophet. The name Isaiah means God is salvation. Aptly to his name, Isaiah lived his whole life firmly believing that Lord God is the only way to salvation. A long, long time ago, in the kingdom of Judah, there lived a man named Isaiah. One day, as usual, he was going to the temple to pray. How beautiful is your temple, Lord! I feel so good every time I come here. Isaiah was praying as usual that day. He knelt down and closed his eyes to pray. But then, suddenly he had a vision. Huh? In that vision, he was given a deep awareness of the holiness of God. The vision also showed him his sins. Huh? No, I'm a sinner. I live among sinners. How am I going to live with this burden? God, please help me. Then suddenly, one of the seraphs flew to Isaiah with a burning call taken from the altar. Open your mouth. Now that this has touched your lips, all your sins will be washed away. Whom shall I send to proclaim my word? Here I am. Send me. Go and preach to the people. Even if they hear my words again and again, they still won't understand. Even when they see again and again, they still won't notice. They have hardened their heart, but still, speak to them. Isaiah was purified by God and called to proclaim his word. The newly gained awareness made him aware of the sins of the society in which he lived. He saw the poor and the weak were oppressed and exploited. He realized that the sacrifices and rituals were simply a show of human glory. Hey! Hey, look! Isn't that Isaiah, son of Amos? Yes, he is. But he looks as if a lightning has struck him. Come, let's go talk to him. Isaiah! Huh? 
What happened, Isaiah? You look like a ghost. I... I saw something. What did you see? I saw a vineyard. Ha 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 ha! You got shocked by seeing a vineyard? Stop joking. Isaiah, tell me what happened. I saw a farmer working in a field. He tilled his land and planted choice wine in it. He then put up a fence around his field. In the middle of the field, he built a storage house and a vine press. The farmer was expecting a good yield of good grapes. The farmer waited and waited for many days. And finally, it was time for plucking them. Yak! What's this? These grapes are sore. Was it for these that I worked for so long? Are you telling a story or explaining a vision? It doesn't matter. Isaiah, you continue. What did the farmer do? What would you have done if it were you? If it was me, then I would dig out the old wines and plant new choice wines. But the farmer had planted choice wines, didn't he? Well, Isaiah, tell us what the farmer did. The farmer got angry. He was upset that all his dedication and hard work to grow good, sweet grapes had failed. He had taken good care of his wines, nurtured them, watered them. But even after that, the grapes had turned sour. So he destroyed the fence and burned the house, so that wild animals could graze on his crops. Do you know what this means? I have no idea. You tell the meaning, Isaiah. Hmm, I'll tell you. The Lord God is the farmer, and we, the people of Israel, are the vineyard. What's he saying? Let's go and find out. Like the farmer, God looked after us. He released us from slavery. He saved us from many disasters. But then what did we do? We disobeyed God's laws. There is bloodshed everywhere. We oppress and exploit the poor. Come, my child. Let's go and hear him speak. We kill our own brothers. We worship idols against God's laws. Hey, look over there. He seems to be a prophet. Let's go and listen to what he is saying. Come, let's go. And like the farmer in the field, God will take away the fence of protection and let our enemies upon us. Huh? What are you saying? We offer sacrifices and celebrate all his feasts? This is God who speaks. I despise your feasts. Your singing and dancing revolts me. When you stretch your hands, I turn my eyes away. Your hands are covered with blood. How can we offer sacrifices without staining our hands, without blood? It's not the blood of animals. I see that your hands are covered with the blood of poor people. You burden them with taxes. The rich are exploiting the poor. You took the money intended for poor. Hmm. What you are saying is making sense. Oh, shut up! Watch your tongue, Isaiah! You are going beyond your limits. Turn to God! Return to the God of Israel! What should we do? Stop the oppression. Give justice to the poor. Protect the widows and orphans. Ha! Huh. That's social work, not worship. It's the work of justice that pleases God, not the blood of lambs and bulls. Your hands are stained with blood! Wash yourselves clean! From that day, Isaiah preached the word of God in Jerusalem and its surrounding areas. A huge number of people became his disciples. The Lord God is holy. 
We must live according to his laws. But which law, master? There are so many. There is only one law that God gave us. The one God gave us through Moses on Mount Sinai. Hear, O Israel! You shall love God with all your heart, with all your strength. He will purify you from your sins. In the meantime, King Ahaz was facing threats from the neighboring countries. An army of soldiers from Syria were marching towards Judah from the north. Edomites had already crossed the southern border and the Philistines were closing in from the west. Ahaz went to the temple of God Molech and he did the unthinkable. He sacrificed his own son. King Ahaz, the great god of Molech is pleased with you. He asks you to send messengers to the north to his servant and ruler Tiglad Pilesa of Assyria. Thank you. That is the only way. Only the king of Assyria can help me now. Now, go ahead. The sacrifice of your son will not be in vain. <laughs> the king of Assyria had become very strong by capturing the nearby nations. But he worshipped idols like God Molech. In the meantime, God sent Isaiah to Ahaz, who was returning to his palace after the sacrifice. King Ahaz? Huh? You are Isaiah, right? Yes, I know what you had been up to. Huh? How do you know? God sees everything. He sent me here to deliver a message. What is it? The Lord is displeased with you. Who told you to sacrifice your own son? Didn't you love him? Huh? You don't know what's going on. We are being attacked from all sides. Only the war god Molech can help us now. God Molech? You fool! Do you think the Lord will abandon his people? Then how is it that we are being attacked from all sides? Do not be afraid. The Lord will take care of Pekka and Razin soon. How soon? They are marching towards us. And by the time your God acts, the cities of Jerusalem will be captured. You need to have faith in our Lord instead of offering sacrifices to those idols. God will never let them destroy Jerusalem, his dwelling place. How can you be so sure? You are just a common man. Hmm. If you are not convinced, then ask for a sign. You can ask for anything you want. King Ahaz was a crooked man. He knew that if he asked for a sign, and if he gets it, then he won't be able to seek the help of King Assyria. If his God doesn't keep the promise, then I lose everything. Huh. I don't need his God. I have the war God Molech on my side. I'll give some reason and send him away. No, I don't need a sign and I will not test the God of Israel. You can go away and mind your own business. Ha! Huh. You are so crooked. Do you think the Lord wouldn't see that? You know that if you get the sign from Lord, then you won't be able to join hands with that idol-worshipping king of Assyria. Huh. How did he know? The Lord himself is giving you the sign. A young woman will shortly deliver a child whose name will be Emmanuel. Before this child knows the difference between good and evil, your enemies will be destroyed. But because of your wickedness, Assyria, whom you trust now, will turn to attack you. But King Ahaz did not believe Isaiah and sent him away. He sent his messengers to the king of Assyria. The king agreed to help under two conditions. One that he will be a huge tribute to Assyria every year and the second that he will place the idols of his god all over Judah. King Ahaz agreed to those conditions. King Ahaz won the war with the help of Assyrian army, but his country had lost its freedom. Master, the land is filled with idols everywhere. They are offering sacrifices to Assyrian gods even at our temple in Jerusalem. Yes. And they are squeezing the poor to pay the tribute.
Hmm. What are we going to do, Master? Judah will be destroyed if this goes on. People have forgotten the Lord, and all of them are worshipping those idols. Idols of God Molech. Don't worry. King Ahaz will die shortly, and after him, a just king will rule this land. He will be filled with the Spirit of the Lord, and Judah will be filled with the knowledge of God. He will destroy all the idols, and he will be kind to the poor. How soon will it happen, Master? Very soon. This will happen sooner than you think. And like Isaiah had predicted, King Ahaz died shortly. His son, Hezekiah, became the new king of Judah. Hezekiah was a kind man and he was filled with the Spirit of the Lord. A new chapter had opened in Isaiah's life. Master, welcome. I'm grateful for your presence in this palace. Peace to you, my son. Thanks for coming by, Master. You have such knowledge about God, and I need your advice on many things. Son, I am pleased to be at your service. Master, you know my father? He, he did many things to offend the Lord, our God. Yes, that's true. He didn't hear my advice, and he sought the help of Assyrian gods. The country is ruined now, Master. What should I do? You are a good man, my son. Trust in the Lord. The first thing you should do is to destroy all idols in Judah. Yes, Master. I will send out the orders immediately. A great reform followed. Hezekiah sent out the orders to destroy all the idols in Judah. There! Destroy that! Hezekiah banned idol worship in his kingdom. Hezekiah also stopped paying tribute to the king of Assyria. The Assyrian king were not happy with this, and they sent out an army to attack Judah. <sighs> Your Majesty, the Assyrian army! What happened? The Assyrian army is invading our country! They are destroying all the cities on their way. They are killing everyone. They are not even sparing the women and children. Hmm. They will reach Jerusalem in a few days. My lord, we must do something to stop them. Prepare the army. Get ready for a battle. Minister, you must go and seek advice from Prophet Isaiah. Ask him what is the will of God. But, but my lord, he has gone mad. He's going around naked these days. Huh? He must have some good reason. Now go to him and seek his counsel. Yes, my lord. Hezekiah sent his minister to seek advice from Isaiah. Isaiah was sleeping under a tree that day. Isaiah. Huh? Isaiah, get up and put your clothes. Hezekiah's men are coming to seek your advice. You should tell them. Yes, my lord. Prophet Isaiah, we have come to seek your advice. I know. Did you think that I had gone mad by walking around naked? We... we... My nudity was a sign. It was a warning to Egypt and Ethiopia. A sign that Assyrian army will invade them. They would make all the prisoners walk completely naked. What? Assyrian army will invade Egypt and Ethiopia too? Yes, but you don't have to worry. The Lord God will protect you. He will not let anything happen to Jerusalem, his dwelling place. Thank you, Master. The king will be very happy to hear this. In a few days, the Assyrian army reached outside the gates of Jerusalem. Listen, you fools of Judah! How dare you defy the great king of Assyria? How dare you stop being the tribute? And you destroyed our gods. Surrender, or we will destroy this city. My lord, he's not ready for any treaty. He's pouring out blasphemous. No, what should we do? There is no other way 
other than to surrender, my lord. At least the lives of our people will be saved. No, we will not surrender. I will not let that evil king rule over our holy city. This is where our Lord God lives. The holy ark is this city. If they take over our land, then they will destroy our temples. But my Lord... No, I will never let that happen. Have mercy on us, Lord. Do not punish us according to our sins. Please, please save us from the Assyrians. Your Majesty. Huh? Prophet Isaiah? You are here. Yes, the Lord God had sent me to deliver this message. Assyria was a rod that I used to punish Judah for her sins. But now their pride and cruelty had exceeded. I am going to destroy her. But Master, we don't have much time left. They are outside the walls of the city and they will break in by tomorrow. Do not worry, the Assyrian army will not be here tomorrow. God will not let anyone insult his name. Prepare the army. The walls are almost down. We must attack tomorrow at dawn. Give instructions to kill every man and woman inside Jerusalem. Now go! Yes, Master. Master! Master! Huh? What happened? Master, the king has sent you a message. What is it? Is it urgent? Yes, Master. An army from Babylon. Babylon. Tell me, what happened? An army from Babylon attacked us. Most of our soldiers were killed. What? Yes, Master. The king needs all his men to defend Assyria. King has asked you to return immediately. Oh no! Tell the king that we are coming back with the army. We will return right away. Hearing that Babylon had attacked Assyria, the commander took the army and hurried back home. And like God had promised, the Assyrian army returned that night itself. And after that, there were no more wars in the country. As long as Hezekiah lived, the kingdom prospered and everyone lived happily. Father, what happened to Isaiah then? After Hezekiah died, his son Manasseh became the king. He was cruel and he brutally killed Isaiah. Oh no! But he was such a good prophet! Yes, he was. So did you like the story of prophet Isaiah? Yes, Father. Good. Then shall I ask you a few questions? All right. Then tell me the meaning of the name Isaiah. The name Isaiah means the Lord is salvation. Very good, Lucy. What knowledge did he learn from his vision at the temple? Isaiah learned about the holiness of God. He also learned about his sinfulness from the vision at the temple. Very good, George. What was the name of King Ahaz's son? His name was Hezekiah. Correct. Now that's all for today. Tomorrow I will tell you the story of a prophet named Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah? Yes, the prophet who stood alone against a whole nation. Wow! All right, see you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Are you sure Matthew is at the church? Yes, he is hanging around with Father John. Oh, I hope he doesn't irritate Father John with his questions. Yeah, I know. He can be a little irritating sometimes. There they are. Come, let's go there. Good morning, Father. Good morning, children. Hello, Matthew. Hello, 
George. Father, what are you doing here with Matthew? I was just telling him about the book of Judges. Book of what, Father? Oh, haven't you heard about the book of Judges? No, Father, we haven't. Hmm, all right. Come here and sit down. I'll tell you a story from the book of Judges. Have you heard the story of Samson and Delilah? No, Father. Who were they, Father? Samson depicts the tragic fall of a mighty man. His birth was considered a miraculous event. And even before his birth, his life was dedicated to God as a Nazarite. The angels had warned Samson's parents to never cut his hair. And since Samson's life was dedicated to God, he was not supposed to drink wine and he also shouldn't eat unclean meat. He was sent by God to protect the Israelites from the Philistines. Delilah, it's getting dark. We must get back home. Hey, look at that. Delilah, we must go back. What? What was that? Ah, uh, Delilah, over there. Oh my God! Oh my God! Delilah, run! Samson, and I live nearby. Samson? Yes. What's your name? Uh? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Delilah. I'm from Philistine. Delilah! Delilah! Oh, you're alive. He saved me. You are Samson, right? Yes, I am. How dare you meddle with the affairs of Philistines? You should be thanking me. I saved one of yours. Now go away. <sighs> Come on, let's go now. Who was he? He is Samson, an Israelite. We ruled over them. He is so strong. Samson was gifted with extraordinary physical strength. It was given to him by the God to save the people of Israel. The people of Israel had disobeyed God. And so God sent Philistines to rule over them. For 40 years, the Philistines had made the lives of Israelites miserable. But now it was time for God to send the Philistines away. The Philistines had heard of Samson's strength. I tried to question him, but he walked away. That arrogant Israelite! We must teach him a lesson. We can't afford to let him go on like this. Yes, he could be a danger to Philistine someday. We must destroy him now. But we don't know where he lives. Hmm. Attack the Israelites and he will come to save them. The Philistine army seized Lehi, a town full of Israelites. 
They knew that Samson would come to save his people. Please don't hurt us. Please. Why are you doing this? What wrong have we done? We will stop only when you tell us where Samson is. Samson? But we don't know where he is. You don't know? Then go and find him. Ah. Uh. We will have fun with your people until then. Now go. Yes, sir. We will find him. So, all the men from the town of Lehi, some 3000 of them went up to the nearby mountains searching for Samson. Samson! 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 Huh. Who could that be? Samson! Who are you? What do you want? We are coming from the town of Lehi. The Philistines are attacking us because of you. What? Because of me? I must help them. Wait there. I will calm down. Yes, Samson. They are beating all our women and they are not sparing any children too. Please, Samson. Please come and save us. What do you want me to do? We have to tie you up and hand you over to them. Unless we do that, Lehi will be destroyed. Hmm. I shall come with you and you can tie me up. But But what? But you must promise me that you won't kill me. Thank you, Samson. We promise that we will not hurt you. All right. Then wait there. I'm coming down. And so they tied Samson with two new ropes and they brought him to the city. Here, sir. We have brought you what you wanted. Now please let our people free. <laughs> Not so strong now, are you? Ah. Uh. Take him to the city gates. We will hang him there. But suddenly, the power of God came over Samson. and he broke the ropes around his arms as if they were thread <laughs> there was an old jawbone of a donkey lying in the dirt samson picked it and swung over his head Samson I must go and help him Samson Samson Ah oh, Delilah Delilah Yes it's me Wake up Samson Delilah with the jawbone of a donkey I killed a thousand men today Yes You are a great warrior, but you are wounded. Please come to my house. Where am I? This is Gaza. This is where I live. Please come with me. All right. Take me to your house. Delilah took Samson to her house and tended his wounds. Samson was blessed by God, and his wounds healed quickly. The wounds have healed. He is much stronger than I thought. But the Philistines were getting restless. 
they were getting angry of all trouble Samson was causing. They had to find out what made him so strong. Over a thousand men dead, more people injured. Who is this Samson? I heard he got his powers from God himself. Those stupid Israelites, they believe all stupid things. We must find the secret of his strength. Only then can we defeat him. Uh, uh, but how? Hmm. Let's go to Delilah. Maybe she can trick him into telling the secret of his strength. I think it's a brilliant idea. Only a woman can learn the secret from him. Do you think she will agree to help us? Who is going to refuse bags of silver? Ha 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 ha! After a few days, the leaders of Philistine came to Delilah's house when Samson was not around. Delilah, you must save our people from the hands of Samson. You are the only person in this world who can find the secret of his strength. But I tried. I have asked him several times, but he never told me the truth. Lie! You are lying! Unless you tell us his secret, we'll burn you alive. Ah! Ah! Have you forgotten the ten thousand pieces of silver promised? Mm. Ah! Leave her! Ah! 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 I did. I did my best. But he never tells me the truth. I tied him with seven new bowstrings, bound him with new ropes, wove his hair into the wrap of the web. But, but, stop playing games with us. We'll come back tomorrow. If you don't get the secret by then, come, let's leave. Huh? What am I going to do? That night. Delilah poured wine in Samson's glass and got him drunk. Samson, you have fooled me so many times. I wonder if you love me at all. Oh, my darling, I love you more than I love my own life. No, you don't. You are just lying. No, my dear, it's true. If you really love me, then why don't you tell me the secret of your strength? My love, ask me anything but that. If I reveal that, then it'll be my end. Ah, my head! Why is it so? Tell me, dear. I'm sorry, dear, but I can't. You don't trust me? That's why you are not telling me the secret. I... I trust you. Tell me, dear. Delilah, my love, I'm a Nazarite. Nazarite? What does that mean? The Lord, the Lord has chosen me. I shouldn't... I shouldn't drink wine. I shouldn't cut my hair. I should always be at his service. Nazarite, huh? Sleep well, my dear. Your secret is safe with me. Shh! Shh! Here! Ask the leaders to come here. I have found the secret. Yes, I will. That night, Delilah summoned the leaders of Philistine and revealed the secret to them. It's his hair. Once you have cut his hair, then he will lose all his powers. <laughs> so it's his hair. Cut his hair now. Yes, my lord. Uh, uh, what? 
Delilah! Delilah! Who are they? <laughs> Good job, Delilah! Here is your reward. Delilah, how could you do this to me? I trusted you. I'm sorry, my dear. But they threatened to kill me. I'm sorry. I... I should have never trusted you. <laughs> Where is your power now, Samson? You fool! Untie me, and I will show you, you filthy Philistinian! How dare you! Hold them! Hold them! Leave me, you! I'm going to poke your eyes out. Let's see how you fight without your eyesight. No! No! Please stop! You promised me! We kept our word. We didn't kill him. And you got your money too. Now move aside! No! I will not let you! I said move, you! No! 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 Ah! That night, Philistine kings grabbed Samson and they did a terrible thing. They poked his eyes out, tied him with chains and dragged him away. They locked him in a prison cell and they put him to work turning a great wheel. Day after day, Samson turned the heavy wheel. Ah! 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 Delilah! How could you do this to me? I was sleeping so peacefully in your lap. Uh, why should I blame her? I'm the one who took the walls. Uh, my God, how many failures. I sinned. I broke my vows. Lord, be merciful to me. Please forgive all my sins. Please. <laughs> Samson realized his mistakes, but there was nothing he could do now. He was blind and shut in a prison cell. He had lost all his powers too. He prayed to God day and night seeking mercy and slowly his hair started to grow back. Ha <laughs> ha ha! That stupid Samson! He thinks his God is greater than our great God Dagon. He is a fool and he is rotting now in prison. This should be a lesson to everyone who stands against our God Dagon. I say we must celebrate. We must celebrate our victory over Samson. Yes, let's have a feast to celebrate our victory. The leaders of Philistine organized a feast to celebrate their victory. They thought their God Dagon had given them their victory over Samson. Of course their God had nothing to do with it. There is no God Dagon at all. Hey, listen! Let's bring Samson out here so we can have some fun with him. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. It would be fun. Bring Samson here. Yes, my lord. Huh? Where am I? Keep walking. Uh. Take him to the stage and fasten him between the pillars. Yes, and leave the chains long enough so that he can dance. Dance? Ha ha ha! It would be fun to watch that blind giant dance. What? What are you doing? Uh, where am I? You are at the temple of our great god, Dagon. Uh? 
Dear people, the sacrifice is over. Now you can watch and enjoy the dance by Samson. <laughs> Huh? Start dancing, you blind giant! Yay, start! We are waiting! Dance, you fool! Ah! Oh. Yeah, beat him more! It will be fun to watch this giant dance in pain! Can't you hear? You are asked to dance! Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. <laughs> no! It's because of me. It's all my fault. The temple was crowded with over 3,000 men and women. And they were all having a great time making fun of Samson and his God. But Samson was quietly praying. Dear Lord, please remember me, your servant. My God, give me back my strength. Just one more time. Please God, help me this one last time. Please. <sighs> God gave him back his powers. And when Samson realized this, he walked between two large pillars and placed his hands on them, one on each side. Please God. He pushed with all his might. The pillars gave away and the stones of the great building came crashing down in a thundering roar of cloud and dust. It all came tumbling down on the five evil kings and the evil people who were celebrating there. The rock fell on Delilah too. Samson too died with thousands of other people. And that's the story of Samson and Delilah. Did you like this? Yes, Father. So, shall I ask you a few questions? Who can tell me who the judges were? Judges were the liberators sent by God whenever Israelites were suffering. That's correct. And who can tell me what a Nazarite mean? A Nazarite is a person whose life was consecrated to the service of God. He would be under the vow to never consume alcohol, to never cut his hair and not to eat any unclean food. That's good Lucy. And what was the secret of Samson's strength? Samson was a Nazarite and because of this God had given him immense power. And how did Samson lose his power? Delilah tricked Samson into drinking wine and when he was asleep, they cut his hair too. Excellent Lucy, let's leave now and when you come tomorrow, I will tell you the story of Ruth. Who was that father? Was she an Israelite too? No my child, she was not an Israelite. God does not favor any particular race. Ruth was a Gentile woman and she became the great-grandmother of King David from whose dynasty came the Messiah. We shall learn her story tomorrow. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, children. Good morning, children. Good morning, Father. So, did you like the story of King David I told you yesterday? Yes, Father. Matthew? Yes, Father. Can you tell me the name of David's son who became the king of Israel after he died? Hmm, was it Solomon? That's correct, Matthew. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of the wisest king of Israel, King Solomon. Solomon was the second son born to King David's favorite wife, Bathsheba. The Bible depicts Solomon as the wisest king of Israel. Two Psalms, the Book of Proverbs, Koheleth, Song of Songs, and Wisdom are attributed to him. 
Even Jesus refers to Solomon's wisdom. Though Solomon was a wise man, idol worship, luxury, and pride caused his downfall. At the time of his death, he could not find any meaning in his life. Solomon is a negative model, an example of worldly wisdom and unaccountable authority that led to his despair and destruction. Wow! Please tell us his story, Father. <laughs> yes, Lucy. I was just about to begin. With the help of his mother, Bathsheba, Solomon secured the throne of his father, David. David died soon after, and once he became the king, he eliminated all his enemies one by one. Solomon built a huge and powerful army comprising of thousands of chariots and horsemen. He also had a mighty fleet of hundreds of ships. And one night, when he was sleeping, God spoke to him. Solomon. Huh? Who was that? God? You have found favor with me. You may ask whatever you want. Lord God, grant me a listening heart. Please give me wisdom to rule your people according to your law. I am well pleased with your request. You did not ask for power or prestige. I will make you the wisest man in the world. If you live according to my commandments, your throne will last forever. I will make you rich and powerful. Thank you, God. Thank you. God blessed Solomon with his wishes, and he became quite famous for his knowledge and wisdom across all nations. People came from far off places seeking his help. One day, two women came to his palace carrying a child. How can I help you? Lord, please help us. Lord, this woman stole my child. The child she's carrying is mine. Please help me, my lord. No, my lord. She's lying. This child is mine. My lord, we gave birth on the same day next to each other. But she gave birth to a dead born. And, and when she saw that her child was dead, she took my son and placed her dead child by my side. Please, my lord, please let me have my son back. You? She's lying, my lord. She is a liar. This is my son. It was she who gave birth to a dead child. It is sure that one of you is lying. I'm going to find out who that is. God! A sword! Huh? Your Majesty. Take that child from that woman and cut the baby into two pieces. Let these women have each halves. No! Here, take him. I'm happy even if it's just a half. I won't give her my baby. No! Please stop. No, my lord. Please don't kill my child. I can't watch my son killed. Let my son live with her. Please don't kill him. Please ask the guard to stop. Ha! Huh. Now we know who's the true mother of this child. She is his true mother. A mother would always value her child's life more than her own. God, give the child to her and put the other woman in prison. No, please. I'm sorry. Thank you, my lord. Thank you so much. Like this, 
Many people came to Solomon seeking justice and wisdom. Solomon was known as the wisest man in the Middle East. He composed thousands of songs and proverbs. He also began the construction of a grand temple. Excellent craftsmen from the country supervised the construction. He also encouraged writers and they began to write the history of Israel. And a magnificent temple was built in seven years. He founded the schools for politics and law. Scholars from various lands lived at his court. He encouraged discussions among the scholars of law. He also encouraged various science such as botany, zoology and astronomy. People from distant lands came to meet him. One day, the Queen of Sheba, daughter of the Pharaoh, came to visit him. My Lord, I thought people were exaggerating when they spoke about you. But... But... But what, Princess? But they didn't tell me even one tenth. You? You are so full of knowledge and wisdom. Thank you, Princess. After a few days, Solomon married the Gentile Princess. She was not an Israelite, but Solomon wanted to sign treaties of peace with neighboring kings and he accepted Pharaoh's daughter in return. But the Gentile princes brought their idols and priests along with her to Jerusalem. Solomon built temples and shrines for the gods of his wives. The princes and others started worshipping the idols they brought from their lands. Thus, idol worship started again in Jerusalem. He also started building huge palaces for his wives to live. He, composed thousands he slowly stopped caring about the welfare of his people and started building temples and fortresses for his wives. craftsmen from the country supervised the construction. But in order to meet the expenses for building all temples and palaces, Solomon started levying heavy taxes on the people. No, please stop! Huh? Get away, you fool! But what are you doing? How am I going to plow my land without my oxen? Please don't take him! I beg you! Move aside, you fool! Ah! You should have thought that before defaulting your taxes! Please! Don't take him! Huh! And if you don't pay the rest of your taxes, then you won't have to worry about plowing the land at all! What happened to our king? He has become so cruel! Lord, please help us! Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Hundreds of thousands of people were forced into slavery for construction of temples. Even Israelites were made slaves along with foreigners. Pull! Pull, you idiot! Ah! Uh, I don't know what to do! Our lives have become so miserable. Hmm. God made us free, but our king, our king made us slaves again. Yes, he has become so cruel. Huh? We struggle all day and night for what? For our king and his wives to enjoy? Hush, lower your voice. You'll lose your head if the supervisor hears you. Who cares? I'm fed up with my life anyway. One day, a man of God, Prophet Ahijah, received a message for Solomon from God. He came to the palace to deliver the message. Who are you? I am Prophet Ahijah. I received a message from God, and I am here to deliver it. What have you done, my king? You have defiled the throne of David. What? How dare you? Calm down. This is the voice that proclaims the word of God. You filled my holy city with idols. But, but didn't I build a beautiful temple for God? And, and what's wrong in building a few temples for my wives to worship? You, you enslaved the people I freed. 
you denied them justice. I detest your empire. On account of my servant David, I will not strike you down. But after your death, your kingdom will be destroyed. Hmm. Your Majesty, I have delivered the message that God wanted me to. Let me take your leave. Hmm. Who cares what happens after my death? I live only once, and I'm going to enjoy this till the end. <laughs> Solomon forgot God's commandments and he punished everyone who acted against his will. Your Majesty? Yes? Do you remember Hadad, the king of Edom? Yes, my father killed him. What is it now? My lord, his son has come back from Egypt, and he's steering the people against you. And you have done nothing about it? How dare he? Get him and hang him! Let him suffer the faith of his father. But my lord? You heard what I said. Kill him. That's my order. Like that, Solomon executed everyone who dared to oppose him. But one supervisor of Solomon was very kind to the slaves. Ah, oh, when are we going to get some rest? We've been working for days without sleep. God, please help us. You lazy fools! How dare you take rest! Stand up! Stand up! Or I'll... Stop! I will take care of this. You can go now. Master, we are sorry. Don't worry. Sit down. Huh? Here, have some water. Uh, thank you. I know you are tired, but... But you have to finish this by today evening. You know what the king's orders are. He will punish you even more if we don't complete this today. You are so kind to us, master. I wish the king too was like you. Don't worry, my friend. You will get your freedom soon. Here, have some water and let's begin as soon as you are ready. Jeroboam, Solomon's supervisor, was a kind man and he treated the slaves fairly. One day, God sent prophet Ahijah to Jeroboam. Jeroboam! Jeroboam, stop! Huh? Who are you? Huh? <sighs> Jeroboam, I am prophet Ahijah. It is God who sent me to meet you. God? But why? He wanted me to deliver his message to you. Huh? But tell me this first. You have seen the condition of Israelites here. What would you have done if you were to become the king? Me? A king? Yes. What would you have done? Hmm. I would. The first thing I would do is to free all the slaves. Ah, that's great. You are such a wise man. And never forget what you just said. What are you saying? I... I don't understand. Jeroboam, here is the God's message to you. This is Israel. I will tear this up and give ten tribes to you. For the sake of my servant David, I will give Judah to his descendants. What? Could this be true? Thank you, God. Thank you. When Solomon came to know that Jeroboam was being kind to his slaves, he really got angry. Your Majesty? Bring Jeroboam immediately! How dare he provoke revolt among these slaves! But, my lord, it seems that he was told to do so by a prophet. What? A prophet? Yes, my lord. Prophet Ahijah is with him. Anyone who dared to oppose me must die. 
Anyone who raises a finger against me will die! My lord, if you do so, then there won't be many alive. What? What do you mean? Yes, my lord. People are dissatisfied. Even the soldiers have started revolting against us. Ha! I don't care about that. Every opposition must be crushed. I'm not going to tolerate any rebellion against me. Get Jeroboam immediately. I'm going to hang him for this. I'm sorry, Jeroboam, but you have to leave now. But... But... The king has sent his soldiers for you. If they find you, then they will not hesitate to kill you. But I was just being kind to the slaves. What's wrong with that? Our king is doomed. He will not understand this. You must escape now, and you must return to Jerusalem only after his death. Yes, prophet. I will do as you say. Fearing the king, Jeroboam fled to Egypt. He stayed there for many years and waited for Solomon to die. As years passed, opposition increased and Solomon adopted severe measures to suppress the rebellion. Hmm, is it true that the empire is about to collapse? If that's the case, then what have I gained? What good was my rule? Forget the empire. What did I earn with my life? Palaces, feasts, thousands of beautiful women. I got everything I wanted, but still, nothing matters in the end. There is no difference between me and a slave. We both will die in the end. How fast do we pass through this life? I was able to stop all my enemies, but who can stop death? Vanity of vanities, all this vanity, a life that ends in death has no meaning. Oh my God, what if I have to give an account of my life after death? The pleasures of this life will pass away like a flash. I thought I was wise, but in reality, I was an utter fool. I forgot the Lord, and who will forgive me now? Solomon died at the age of 70. He ruled Israel for 40 years. His son succeeded him, but he was more cruel and more oppressive, and he did not possess the wisdom of his father. All the tribes revolted against him, except Judah. When Jeroboam returned from Egypt, people accepted him as their king. Thus, Solomon's empire was split into two, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Wow! Did you all like the story? Yes, sir. Hmm, that's good. Now let me ask you a few questions from the story, shall I? Yes, sir. All right. Now who can tell me how Solomon became the king? Solomon was the son of King David's favorite wife, Bathsheba. King David had promised Bathsheba that her son will rule the kingdom after him. So when he died, Solomon became the king. Very good, Lucy. What was the blessing that Solomon received from God? God blessed Solomon with wisdom and he became the wisest man in the world. Hmm, that's correct. And who did he marry? He married Princess Sheba, the daughter of Pharaoh of Egypt. That's correct. Now tell me why people got discontent with Solomon's rule. Me! Me! Yes, Lucy. Solomon started building huge temples for idol worship and large palaces for his wives to live. 
for meeting the expenses, he started levying heavy taxes on the people. This made people unhappy. And was there any other reason? Yes, father. He also enslaved many people, including Israelites. These slaves worked at the construction sites without rest for building the palaces. This further angered the people. Name the prophet who delivered God's message to Solomon. It was Prophet Ahijah. Very good, Matthew. And what was the name of Solomon's supervisor who was kind to his slaves? It was Jeroboam. Correct again. Now that's all for today. We'll meet again tomorrow for our next story. And whose story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Hmm. Tomorrow I will tell you the story of Prophet Elijah. Prophet Elijah? Who was that? When Israel became corrupt with the authority, God sent prophets as speakers on his behalf. Elijah, the hero of our next story, is the first such prophet. Wow! We are so eager to hear his story. <laughs> I'm sure you are. It's time for us to leave. We'll meet again tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, Father. Hmm. Are you bored, Matthew? Yes, I am. Huh. Hey, look over there. Wow, it's such a large fish. It looks like it will swallow all the other fishes here in the stream. Is this a small whale? Ha <laughs> ha! No, Matthew. This is not a whale. A whale lives in the sea and it's way, way bigger than this. Hmm. In the story Father John told us yesterday, he told us that a whale swallowed Prophet Jonah, right? Yes. A whale is the biggest fish in the sea. Is it bigger than the elephant? Hmm. It's very, very big than an elephant. And is it bigger than a dinosaur? Haha! <laughs> yes, Matthew. It's much bigger than a dinosaur. Oh, now I know how Jonah could live inside the fish for three days. Hey, look! George is coming. Hello, George. Hello, Matthew. Hi, Lucy. Hi. Didn't Father John come yet? He told he will be telling us a story today. Oh, there he is. Hello, kids. I have brought something for you. Wow, it's a coloring book. And it also contains the stories from the Bible. Look here, this one has the story of creation in it. Ha <laughs> ha, look here, it's Adam. Yes, and there's Eve too, here. Can I get one, Father? Of course. I brought these for you. Thank you, Father. And here, Lucy. This one's for you. Wow! This one has the story of Cain and Abel in it. Thank you, Father. And George, here. This is for you. The story of Noah. I love his story. Thank you, Father. Remember, kids. You must read the book while coloring the pages. These books will help you remember the Bible stories that I have been telling you. Thank you, Father. All right, now come on, let's sit there. Everyone ready for today's story? Today I'm going to tell you the story of Job, a wealthy trader. A long time ago, in the land of Uz, there lived a man named Job. He was the richest man in the Middle East and he was also a royal servant to God. Job was very kind to the poor and never hesitated in helping them when they needed. Master! Master! Oh, hello Jacob. How have you been? No, I am in trouble, Master. I... I need your help. What happened, Jacob? Tell me. Master, my daughter is sick, and I think she's going to die. Huh? Come, let's go to your house, 
and let me take a look at her. Thank you, Master. Please come with me. There, that's my house. Come, let's go in and take a look at her. There she is. She, she has been lying like that for two weeks now. Oh, she's got a very high temperature. Didn't you take her to the physician? I, I. I'm sorry, Master. We couldn't afford to take her to the physician, as we didn't have any money with us. What? Why did you come to me, Jacob? Did you ever think that I would hesitate to help you? I am sorry, Master. We already owe you a lot of money, and I was ashamed to borrow again from you. Hmm. You shouldn't have thought so. Anyways, come. Let's take her to the physician. There is no time to waste. Don't worry, Jacob. She's going to be all right. The physician is looking at her, and she will be well soon. I hope she is going to be okay. Master Job, it's so nice of you to bring this poor girl to my place. That's nothing. But tell me, how is she? Her mother and father is anxious to know her condition. Oh, she's going to be all right. You brought her just in time to give her the treatment. She needs a few days rest, but she'll be fine in a week's time. Thank you, Lord. You saved our daughter. Thank you, Master. It's because of you that our child is saved. It's all my Jacob. Come on, stand up. Job helped the poor and needy whenever he could. God had blessed Job with health and prosperity. He had seven sons and three daughters. How many men did we feed today? The dining hall was full today, also, my master. At this rate, we will need a larger hall pretty soon. That's good. God has blessed us abundantly, and we must share it with the poor. Sir, I appreciate your intentions, but if we continue to just give away free food, then the poor people will become lazy, and they will never work at all. Hmm. Why don't we ask them to work in our fields and warehouses? That's a brilliant idea, sir. I will ask our men pass orders today itself. Food for work. It's a great idea, sir. God has blessed us and our master job. Yes, there's no question about it. His business is going so well, and he also ensures that everyone around him are happy. Did you hear about his orders yesterday? Yes, I did. It was so kind of him to offer work in return for food for the poor. No other rich man in our kingdom is as kind as him. Yes, may God bless him and his children. Job owned thousands of ships through which he traded with distant lands. He brought gold and spices from abroad and sold it to Arabs and Egyptians. Job also had thousands of cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Because of God's blessings, he was the richest man in the Middle East. Almighty God, thank you for all your blessings. Please forgive me and my children. For our sins. Come on, dear. It's getting late. We have to reach there before the celebration starts. I'm coming. Huh? Is there something wrong? You don't look all right. Hmm. I don't know. I'm feeling rather down today. Master, master. What happened, Jonathan? Why are you running? Master, your sons. What happened to my sons? What happened, Jonathan? Tell us. Your sons and daughters, they were celebrating at their elder brother's house. They were hit by a huge tornado, master. Oh no! Everyone was killed in the storm. Only I survived. I'm sorry, master. Oh, my children. Huh? Who is that? Isn't he one of our men from the farms? Master, master. Tell me, what is it? Quickly, I just got the news. 
that my children have died. Master, the Midianites, they, they attacked us and took all our cattle and sheep. Huh? Wasn't there anyone to stop them? They killed all our men, Master. Only I managed to escape. One by one, Job's men came to his house, announcing terrible news. Master, our warehouses were burned down. Many of our men died trying to put out the fire. They robbed us. They attacked our caravans. They took all our camels and donkeys. What about our men? They killed all our men too. Only I managed to escape. Master, our ships, I don't know what happened, but all of them were destroyed in a storm. Job lost everything he had that day, including his children. But Job never lost his faith in Lord in spite of so much suffering. My children! God, please tell me what's going on. God, are you praying to him even now? Is this the reward that you got for serving him faithfully all these years? Dear, calm down. You shouldn't be talking like that. Calm down. You are such a fool for praying to him. Huh? In the Lord who gave us everything. And now he took everything back. We should praise his name and never complain. All this while, we had been receiving his blessings from God. Now, we must be ready to accept the pains as well. Yes, you go ahead and praise him and never going to praise your God, your God who took the lives of my children. God, please tell me why you are doing this. Job then tore his robe away, shaved his head and sat on the ground covering his body with ashes. Lord, and Lord has taken away, blessed in the name of Lord. In all this while, Never did Job blame God for what had happened. But Job's hardship were far from over. After a few days, Job was struck by leprosy. The disease was so terrible that his whole body had started to stink. Oh, it's itching so badly. Huh? It's stinking here. Be patient, dear. It's all happening according to his will. How can you praise your God in spite of all this? Your God has been so cruel to us. Why don't you curse him and die? I am almost like a dead man. Even if I die and my flesh withers away, I will praise the Lord. You and your God. You can do whatever you want. I am leaving you. God. Hearing about the misfortunes of Job, Three of his friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, came to see him. Oh my God, what a sight! Come in, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, you have come too. Job, what's happening to you? My God, is this the same rich and famous Job of Middle East? Oh, I can't stand the sight. Job's friends couldn't stand the sight of Job's sufferings and in pain, they tore their robes open. They sat near Job for seven days in silence. They wept for him, for they could see the pain Job was going through. And at the end of seven days, Ah, oh Lord, I'm tired. I cannot go on like this. Please let me die. Let me die so that I can get relief from this pain. My friend, we understand your pain. Why are you losing your heart when you were the one who strengthened the hearts of many people? How can you lose your courage in this time of trouble? God will never allow a just man to suffer. You have no idea of my pain. Look at my skin. My whole body has become an open wound. I don't have any strength left, and I'm hopeless about the future. 
do you think our God's will is under? Maybe your children died for the sins they had committed. But you should never lose your hope. If you are pure and upright, then God will surely answer your prayers. No, strangling me to death would have better than this never-ending torture. A man's life on earth is merely a slavery. I'm longing for my death now. Your desire to die is a proof of the sins you might have committed. God will never be unfair. You should ask your forefathers. They will tell you the same from their experience. You tell me, how can a man ever be just before God who has ever defied him and prospered? I hate my life. Life and death, it's all one to me. I am now declaring this openly. God destroys the wicked as well as the innocents. Huh? Just, just leave me alone. Let me breathe freely for a moment. All these speeches is not going to justify you. What do you know about God? Maybe, just maybe, you haven't received one-tenth of the punishment you deserve. Just repent, my friend. Repent and return to Lord. Raise your hands in prayer and you will receive his blessings. Ha! Huh. All these speeches of wisdom, you are repeating the same old things that others have said. I know those too. I am innocent. Yet you laugh at me. Tell me. Tell me what wrong have I done? I was like the eyes to the blind, legs to the lame, and a father to the needy. I saved the poor and the orphans. I destroyed the wicked people. This misery is a proof of your wickedness. You took the coat of a poor man in a pledge. You snatched the bread from the hungry. You exploited widows and oppressed the orphans. Do you still claim to be just? And by now, Job was getting really confused. He did not understand what was happening to him, and he thought that God was punishing him without a reason. Lies! Lies! They are all lies! Even my friends are accusing me now. I want him to come down and answer me. And suddenly, Job had a vision. And in his vision, God answered Job's questions. Huh? Where am I? Job, who are you to question me and challenge my designs? I will ask you a few questions and you should try answering me. Where were you when I founded the earth? You say you have the knowledge. You answer me. Who set the limits for the sea? Will the sun rise if you demand? Do you show the birds their way in the sky? Do you know the depths of the sea and the width of the earth? Do you know how many stars are there in the sky? I... I am sorry. I don't know. If you do not know such simple things, then how would you know about my plans? I'm sorry, my lord. I take back everything I had said. I repent for everything. I was testing Job's faith, and even in sufferings, he remained faithful to me. My friend, please forgive me for what I had said. Please, pray to God for us. God restored Job's fortunes. He was blessed with many children and he lived for a long time and witnessed many of his generations. And that was a story. Father, I have a doubt. What is it, Lucy? Did Job lose his faith in God when he was sick? No, Lucy, but Job was thrown into a bitter eternal conflict. On one side, he knew how God was just and kind. 
and on the other hand, he knew that he was innocent and didn't deserve to be punished like that. His faith in the kindness of God had made his sufferings even more painful. Job firmly believed that it was God who was punishing him, apparently for no reason. He complains to God, but God doesn't respond. And this made him even more confused and sad. Is that why God came and cleared his doubts? Yes, that's why he spoke to Job in his vision. The moment Job heard what God said, he felt silent. It was not because he understood the reason for his suffering, but because he learned that God's ways are beyond his understanding. But doesn't Bible teaches us that the suffering is the result of sins? Not always, Lucy. Look at Isaiah the prophet. He was a just man, but didn't he suffer for the sins that Israelites had committed? Huh, yes. Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross for the sins of the world, is the greatest example of suffering the just men had to face. Now I understand. Thank you, Father. All right. Now shall I ask you a few questions? Where did Job live? He lived in the land of Uz. Correct, Matthew. How many children did he have? He had seven sons and three daughters. Who can tell me the name of three friends who came to visit Job when he was sick? They were Eliphaz, Bildad, and 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 Zophar. Correct, both of you. Now I want you all to repeat this verse with me. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of Lord. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of Lord. Very good, children. That's all for today. Tomorrow I will tell you the story of Tobit. Who was he? He lived a long time ago in the city of Nineveh. He had a son named Tobias, who was protected by an angel. An angel? Wow! <laughs> I will tell you the story tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Bye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.